All right, hello everyone. Uh, just give me uh, give me like three minutes. I just need to finish something up, um, and I'll be there uh, uh, in a few. Okay. All right, I'll be with you uh, in two seconds. I just need to find my pen. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, I think we're good to go. So, um, hello everyone. Um, so welcome to this uh, midterm review session. So uh, the plan for uh, today is essentially uh, to go through a couple of exercises. So I'm definitely not gonna go through all of these. Uh, I'm going to go through only, I think, uh, five or six. So I'm going to do exercise six, nine, 
15, 20, and 28. Yeah, here we go. Uh, just, to, just to confirm, up yes. is pumping lemon? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, okay. All right, perfect. No. Uh, that was because uh, in, in, uh, in regular semesters, it, it usually is, but in the summer semester, it isn't. Okay, perfect. And just to confirm, the last thing that he mentioned, on, uh, I forget which uh, exact day it was on the lecture, he said, because the uh -huh. last thing he covered was the right right linear grammar and the left linear grammar. Yeah, so everything about grammars, okay, regular perfect. grammars. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, no problem. All right. So, um, so the first thing we're going to look at is... Um, basic uh, language, so a review of, of languages. Um, then we'll, we're gonna look at FAs, uh, regular expressions, grammars, and then closure properties. So there's one exercise for each section. Um, is it multiple choice? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. So typically the format of the midterm is usually the same as the quiz. Uh, so he, he's probably actually already said something about that. He usually does. Um, uh, so, but of course, I, I, don't, I don't know what the midterm looks like, right? I, I, I know uh, as little as you do, right? Um, so um, so let's, let's actually get to some, uh, some exercises. So uh, languages and operations. So exercise uh, six. So, so uh, I mean, so I'm going to do these exercises, and then um, I'm going to let you ask any any questions. So they can be questions about this or questions about anything in general. Uh, but we're going to start off with, uh, with some exercises. So, um, what are the strings of length three or less in L square minus uh, L complement L, where uh, L is uh, this language? Um, so I'll give you. Uh, Let's say, uh, let's say two minutes to uh, to try it, and then we'll uh, we'll look at it uh, together. All right, so hopefully you had uh, a bit of time to, to try this uh, yourself. So uh, this is a standard uh, language operation question. So you're given a finite language and uh, you're asked to do some, some operations on it so that you can uh, find a, a particular uh, set of strings. So in this case, I want strings, uh, strings uh, in, so strings W, uh, strings W in L square minus L complement L, such that the length of W is less than or equal to three. Okay, so uh, we're going to start by by computing L square. So L square, remember, is just shorthand for L concatenate L. 
And so remember, this is just doing the, essentially it's the cross product where you're taking each of the strings in L and concatenating them with each of the strings in L. So L is A, B, B, A, A, B. So then I can just write that a second time. All right, so I have this. And then uh, let's say I take A and then I concatenate it with A, and B, B, A, and A, B. Right. Uh, Sir? Yes. It seems like your L is off from what it says on the assignment. Yeah, you're uh, Yeah, it. you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good catch. So, uh, so that makes it easier. So uh, it was. I was gonna. I was gonna tell you this trick at the end, but um, basically, uh, we're interested in in strings of length uh, three or less, right? So, it does make sense to concatenate a with uh, this string, this string, and this string. But if you concatenate a with this string, right? it's gonna give you a string of length four. And uh, you're not even gonna look at strings of length four in your final answer because you're only interested in strings of length three or less. And so um, to save time, and so I, I recommend that you, you use this during, during, uh, during the midterm is you, you kind of, you notice this pattern and you can just save time in this case and basically just skip the concatenation with ABA, right? Because a concat ABA is a string of length four. So then um, I, I, I'm going to do all of them except for the last one. Uh, so I have A with A, that's AA, AB, ABA, right? And then I'm gonna use the same principle for B. So B is gonna concatenate with A, B and BA. So uh, that's going to give me um, BA, BB, BBA. Right. Uh, then again, I'm going to do the same thing with uh, BA. So I'm going to concatenate it with A and B, but I'm not going to do it with BA and ABA because that's just going to be a waste of time. Right. So um, BA concatenated with A is BAA, and BA concatenated with B is BAB. And then I have some other strings which I don't care about. Right. So that's L square, or at least that's what I'm interested uh, in L square. Uh, then I'm going to do the, the other part of the, the operation. So I, I, did, uh, I did L square. I'm going to do L complement L. So L complement L, right? So what is L complement? L complement is just sigma star uh, minus L. Uh, in this case, we can assume that sigma is AB. So um, I, I, I have my L here. So this is my L. What's in uh, sigma star, which is not in L? Well, I definitely have lambda, right? That's in sigma star, not in L. Then I have uh, strings of length uh, two. So except for BA, so I have AA, AB, and BB. Uh, but now um, I'm not going to do strings of length three. That's gonna be a waste of time. Why? Because uh, anyways, what's going to happen is I'm going to take a string um, uh, so suppose I did write the string of length three, right? So suppose I wrote AAA, then I would have concatenated it with, so I would have concatenated it with at least a string of length one, right? So a string of length three with at least a string of length one. So suppose it was A, that's a string of length four, and I don't care about uh, strings of length four. So again, I'm going to use that, that, uh, that skip the useless stuff trick, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna expand the complement further. So I can just write dot dot dot, and I'm gonna concatenate that with L. So that's going to be uh, A B B A and A B A, right? So then uh, the concatenation, right? So I'm going to take uh, lambda, and in this case, lambda concatenated with each of these is going to give me each of these and each of these are strings of length three, so I'm going to actually write uh, all of them. So I'm going to write A, B, B, A, and A, B, A. All right, 
Uh, next, I'm going to do uh, AA. So AA, I'm going to do the concatenation with A and B, right? Because the other strings are, are length uh, four or more. So I'm going to have AAA and AAB, okay? Uh, then I'm going to do with AB, so AB with A and B. So that's going to give me uh, ABA and ABB. And then lastly, BB with, with um, the two strings, the two uh, strings of length one, so BBA and BBB. Um, so that's going to be L complement uh, concat with L. So now what, 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 what I'm, uh, the only thing I need to do now is just uh, take the, the complement. So I need to do L, uh, L square uh, different, or not the complement, I have to take the difference. So L square different L complement L. So what is that going to give me? Essentially, remember what the, the difference is, it's everything in uh, this guy that's not in this guy, right? So, um, so what are those? Well, uh, AA is, um, is not in here, so I can add it. Uh, then uh, AB is also not in here, so I can uh, add it. Um, then, so I'm gonna look at uh, strings of length, uh, strings of length two for now, I'm not gonna do, Oh. oh God, oh God, sorry, there was a spider on me. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, um, so, so what was I saying? Yeah, so I'm gonna do strings of length two. So, um, so I have AA, AB, and uh, BB, which also is in an L complement L, so I have BB. Uh, then for uh, the strings of length, uh, three, because I'm not going to take this one, right? Because this one's also in L complement L. Uh, then for strings of length three, uh, A, B, B, A, B, A is, in, is also in, in uh, L complement L. Um, and so is uh, B, B, A, right? So B, B, A is also in here. But the rest, so B, A, A and B, A, B, uh, that isn't in L complement L. So B, A, B and uh, BAA would be uh, strings of length three, and those are the only strings of length three or less. Uh, so strings uh, of length three or less. Um, right, so, um, so this would be your final end. Okay, and uh, let me just, uh, is that what I wrote? Yes. No, yes, it is, good, okay. So that, that would be your, your final answer, right? So, um, so, so maybe the takeaway, so the takeaway behind this exercise is uh, know uh, the definition of your operations um, and know them very well, right? And, and also know how to use uh, tricks like this if you wanna uh, do something like strings of length three or, or less. Um, is there anything else I want to say about this exercise? Um, no, I think that's it. Uh, so any questions about this? Okay, doesn't look like it. All right, so uh, moving on to the next question. So I want to do question nine uh, for finite, uh, for the finite automata part. So, um, uh, the language accepted by the following NFA is uh, AB star, so this is a true or false. Um, so I'll give you a minute to try this one. Um, and I'm going to grab myself a cup of water. So I'll be back in a minute.
All right, very good. Everyone says F. Um, it is indeed F, so it's not true. Um, so why is that? Um, well, for instance, um, if we just look at uh, the string uh, AA, so uh, how does it? How does this uh, machine process AA? So um, it can either right. So I start here. I start at my initial state. It can either read the A or skip it, and then use uh, lambda, right? So, if it does use lambda, so it it goes to this this state for free, and then uh, it still hasn't read any of the AA, and it essentially halts, right? So, there's no transition to go to this state, so it halts, but it hasn't uh, read all of the string, and so. Um, by definition, that means that it doesn't accept a. Um, and in the case where uh, in the case where it does read a, so the pointer moves one here, uh, it it uh, lands in this uh, final state. But again, it still hasn't read uh, the full uh, string. And so again, by definition, because it hasn't fully read the string, it uh, rejects uh, this uh, this possible. Uh, reading of the string. So in both cases, it's a reject. And so uh, there's at least one string that gets rejected, meaning that uh, the language accepted by this FA is not uh, sigma star. So the answer is uh, indeed uh, false, right? Um, so, okay, that's, uh, that's great. So we know it's not sigma star, uh, but now what is the language accepted by this, uh, by this FA? Um, so to be honest, it's not, it's not really clear to me that much just looking at the FA. Um, so in situations like these, I like to use the uh, FA to, to regular um, expression. Is it AB star? Uh, the, okay, let, let's, let's see if it is AB star. Um, so I like to use the FA to regular expression uh, conversion algorithm. Um, so uh, hopefully some of you remember uh, how that works because we didn't really look at that in the tutorial. We, I just posted a, a video for it. Um, so what's the idea of the, um, uh, of the conversion algorithm is remove all intermediate states until you get something like um, a single initial state, uh, you maybe have a loop on your initial state, you have uh, an edge, a directed edge to your final state, you maybe have a loop on your final state, and then a directed edge back. So you wanna get to this uh, type of configuration, right? So how do you do that? Uh, in this particular example, it's, it's actually not that hard. You just need to eliminate uh, this intermediate state. So um, how do you do that? Well, to do that, you need to say, if I remove this intermediate state, what uh, transitions do I need to account for? Well, the only transition in this case is the transition to go from, uh, let's say, let's call this uh, Q0 and Q1, and this will be Q2. Then the only transition that I need to consider is the one from Q1 to Q0 via Q2. So uh, if I remove Q2 as the intermediate state, then I get uh, Q0. Uh, so Q0 goes to Q1, with either A or B or lambda, and then Q1 back to Q0. So this is a final state. Q1 back to Q0 with uh, B concatenated with lambda, or in this case, just B, um, right? So, so that's, your, uh, that's your sort of final um, general transition graph, right? That's the one you're looking for. Then you can kind of easily convert this to a regular expression. So the regular expression would be, um, I can directly go to my final state with either A or B or a lambda. And then what I can do is uh, do B. So I can, do, I can do this and then this any number of times. So what does that mean? I can, can read a B and then read A or B or lambda. Uh, I can do this uh, any number of times. So, um, so a b star isn't right, right? Because it can start with b, um, a or b, 
uh, B star. Uh, so it doesn't need to end, right? It doesn't need to, so someone said A or B, uh, B star. It doesn't need to end with a, uh, it could be, let's say, so this can't be AA, but you could have, um, Oh, this can't be AA either. Uh, I'm trying to find a counterexample why it's not this. So say ABA. Yeah, so uh, ABA is, right? So you can have an A then BA here, but you can't do that here, right? Uh, it can be A, yeah, of course. It can definitely be A, right? You can, you can clearly accept A here. So, uh, so the regular expression also represents A. And uh, lambda, you can you can of course take a, a free lambda ride to, to the final state. Um, so, okay, someone said the same thing. A or B or lambda B star. Uh, A or B or lambda B star. Why do you? S okay, that. Oh, okay, all of it B star. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's good. Um, yeah, so that that would be uh, a simplified version of this um, because um, what you could do is you could just say um, you could have your your lambda uh, and then you could concatenate it with this, and then of course if you have R S star, well this is clearly equivalent to uh, well, is it? Uh, actually, no, it's not. No, that's not. Uh, yeah. Well, the thing is, it, it's 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 useful. It might be right that um, because if I have R and then S or lambda star right then is this equivalent to um s or lambda star or sorry s or lambda r star um so i would say it doesn't seem like it in general but if you have um like if you have for example Yeah, I haven't thought about this, but um, because this is a so this is a b or a star, right? And this is b a or b star. Um, so you can have b a b here, and you can have a b a here, but you clearly can't have. Um, you can't have ABA from here, right? So, um, so it doesn't seem like uh, what, uh, yeah, so it doesn't seem like um, you can just switch these two, right? Because it doesn't look like this, uh, this expression is equivalent to uh, this expression. So it doesn't look like that's true because for instance, you could have, um, uh, cause here you're forced to start with a B and here you're forced to end with a B. So um, for instance, BA is in here and uh, BA is not in here. So you can't have BA here because you need to end with a B. So, um, so these two expressions are the same. And so um, I don't think you can uh, just write A or B or lambda B star, right? So that wouldn't be enough um, because these two expressions aren't the same. Um, so then are there any alternatives? Uh, so someone is saying, I mean, 
uh, I, I don't know why we're not happy with this answer. Uh, like, uh, because this is what the conversion algorithm gives you. I mean, if you really want a, a, a simplified version of the answer, then I, I can understand that, but. Uh, sir, sir, I have a question about the process. Yeah. So um, just to make sure I understand it, the first step was we, we find the, the transition from Q0 to Q1, that I get when we generate our regular expression. But the second step is you go from the terminal state, Q1, yeah. back around the loop to itself? Uh, like a Q, no, the, Q1? Hmm? No, no, it's, it's so, uh, the end goal is to have something that looks like this, right? Yes, no, I understand, yes. Okay. So then what you want to do is you want to, for instance, in this particular case, you want to look at your Q2, right? Because that's the only thing that's preventing you to look like this mm -hmm. and remove it, right? And so yeah. if you want to remove the state, you need to account for the transitions that go through the state. Yes, uh, I get it. Okay. But so, but so if you scroll, scroll your screen over to the right, just slightly. Yeah. When you have your regular expression, there's a portion that's written in blue and a portion written in black. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The blue section, you achieve that by going from Q1, yeah. you transitioned to, to B, and then you did A or B or Lambda, and then of course in a star. Yeah. But I'm just, my question is the method to generate this requires that I start at Q1 and I go back to Q1. That's like, that's like a rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's, uh, that's just a formula of how to always go from uh, it's just a, a formula of how to always go from something that looks like this to something that looks like this. Cool. So, okay. That's, that's my question. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so maybe, okay. So going back to, we're trying to be clever here and, and look for a shorter version. So I could maybe suggest to expand it. And then, um, so if I expand this, right, so I have BA or BB or, um, B star or B and then B A or B B or B star. And I think, I think we can agree that uh, if you have B or B B in a star, you don't need the B B, right? Um, so you can just have B because the B B can generate, can be generated by B. Um, and then I can have the same thing with B A or B star. So this looks like, um, I mean, are any of the answers that people have written, uh, like for instance, um, for instance, someone wrote A or B or Lambda and B star star. So can I, um, Uh, can I defeat? Well, I mean, this this kind of looks to me like you're doing uh, A or B star, um, because yeah. So this 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 I mean is a bit cheating, no? Because here now now you're gonna if you do L of this, then it kind of looks like you're gonna get sigma star, no? Because here you could just say, oh well, this is always lambda, so then you can choose A or B or lambda any number of times. So. Um, so, I mean, that's, and this is definitely not, right? So this did not represent sigma star. Um, and then if you want A or B or lambda, so someone else wrote this. Um, I mean, this is good practice anyways, but um, is this also, uh, well, this is also, this is also sigma star, right? So you can just say, oh, I'm always gonna use lambda. And then L of this is uh, sigma star, right? So. Um, so no, I mean that those aren't equivalent. Um, so be careful when you're trying to simplify something because uh, here it really has to have this kind of pattern. And we, we, we already showed, right, that it's not sigma star. And so uh, an oversimplification might lead to something um, that, it's, that it's not. All right, so um, I mean, if, if I wanted a, a like a, a more compact version, I would have probably just written this, but I don't think I would have uh, risked because th this seems already pretty atomic um, in terms of writing. Uh, was the question to convert the FA 
No, it was just uh, the question was very different from what uh, I'm doing. It was, uh, is the language accepted by the following NFA uh, sigma star? So we already said no, um, but that's not very interesting, right? So um, the actual language accepted by this uh, FA is the language represented by this regular expression. Okay. So um, any other questions about this? Let me just, uh... no, okay. All right. So, um, so the next exercise is actually pretty similar to what we just did actually. It's another conversion of an FA to a regular expression. So if it still isn't clear how to do this, then um, hopefully this example is going to um, solidify your understanding a bit more. So we're given uh, this FA and we wanna find the equivalent uh, regular expression, right? So uh, let me give you, this one might take, let me give you two minutes to try it and uh, we'll look at it uh, together. Okay, so is there any difference? Okay. Okay, Ian. Yes, there's a big difference. Um, there's a big difference because if you have the regular expression lambda, then L of that regular expression is the language which just contains lambda. And then if your regular expression is the empty set, then the language represented by this regular expression is the empty set. And, and these are very different, very different languages, right? This one contains one element, this one contains no elements. Uh, A. All right, so I see someone, uh, okay, <laughs> someone already answered it. So uh, let's look at the question together. So uh, as I said before, uh, in a FA to regular expression algorithm, uh, the point is to get your regular, to your, sorry, your FA to look like uh, something like this, right? So that's what we're going to do. And to do that, uh, we're going to need to eliminate this intermediate state, right? So how do we do that? As I said before, we account for all of the transitions that go through this state. So uh, in this case, the only transition that does that is the one uh, that allows you to go from zero to two via one, right? So that's, um, I can read an A or a B, then I can read any number of Bs and then a lambda to go to two. 
So that means that when I convert this, I'm going to get, so I still have zero, right? Um, the state Q zero, then I can go uh, directly to two uh, by reading A or B, and then reading B any number of times. Uh, then I can stay, uh, right? Then I can stay in two with A uh, any number of times, and then I can go back from two to zero uh, with B, right? So then uh, the standard formula to go from this to a regular expression is um, I take uh, this piece here, right? So this piece to go, or actually, uh, I don't, yeah, so let's not, we're not gonna need this piece for now. I just need this piece to go directly to two. So I can write A or B, B star. Um, so I can do that to go directly to two. And then uh, to stay in two, right? To stay in two, I can uh, read an A, right? I can read an A or I can uh, read a B, uh, read a bunch of A's, and then read this guy uh, to go back to two, right? So, or I can uh, read a B, uh, read an A a bunch of times, and then read A or B, A or B, B star. And then I can do either one of these things interchangeably uh, any number of times, right? So any number of any number, any number of times. Uh, and then this is a regular expression that's equivalent to this uh, FA. So uh, shouldn't there be, um, uh, let me there be a, um, a star at the beginning? Before any Bs? Yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because you can stay in zero and then go to two. Yes, good. Thank you. Good. And then even for two, shouldn't there be A star? Uh, no, that one I'm going to disagree because A star, right? A star or B star is equivalent to A or B star. Because, okay. right? right? Yeah, okay. correct, yeah. So, oh yeah, because yeah, there's... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, good. Very good. Um, right. So, um, so already, Nabil, I can tell that your equivalent expression is isn't right because you have an expression and then star, meaning that you this this implies that you only need lambda, and this implies right the fact that you have a or b without a star means that you need to at least have an a or b. So um, in the second half, oh right right right, in the second half. Uh, uh, like I just said, you don't need a, a star here. I mean, you can, right? I mean, it doesn't hurt, but uh, it also doesn't hurt not to put it. They're, they're equivalent. And that's um, because you have the whole thing start. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so in general, uh, in general, I would agree that A star or B is not equivalent to A or B, right? I, I hope everyone sees that. Uh, but A star or B star, is equivalent to A or B star. I'm sorry, can you tell me how did you get the second phase? Like after the A I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't really hear you well. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, you can. Yes. Uh, can you please repeat like the second half after the A plus? How did we get B, B A star? Um, you mean this part? this part? Yes. Yeah. Please. So 
this part allows me to go to two, right? Then once I'm in yes. two, once I'm in two, I can do two things, right? I can either uh, stay in two by reading an A, mm -hmm. or I can uh, go from two to zero with B, right? Then uh, stay in zero a couple of times with A, and then go back to two from zero with A or B, B star, right? Oh, yes. yes. So then okay. that's, that's exactly what I wrote here. And then I can do that any number of times. So that's why there's a star. That's why there's a star here. Okay, okay I got it. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, yes. The A that you have the, the red square above. Yep. If I had put a star there, is that yeah. wrong? No, I mean, I mean, they're equivalent answers. So it's not, it's not the, the regular expression is still correct. Um, <laughs> sir, uh, so in, in that case, um, yeah. if, if we put uh, the A with the square again, uh, if yeah. we put it outside the bracket and add the star, would that be equivalent and keep the rest the same? Because mm. uh, I don't see what you mean by you take the, you put the A outside. So, so um, where you have like your second big bracket. Where I um, have my second. Um, Okay, so a, one, what, your, right, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so your fourth one. Right. Your, your, right. So you have your A there. Your, your right. A is with that one. Yeah. If I put it just outside with the star, would that be equivalent? Uh, no. No, I, no, I don't. Because so, so now you're saying A or let's say some regular expression, star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking if this is equivalent to A star, R star. Uh, right, so this this is uh, any string that starts with a any number of times, and then the regular expression any number of times, and and this is you can interchange between them. So this means mm -hmm. you can have a r a a r, and this just means that you can have a a a r r r. So you can't you can't take right. this a out. You can't do that. Right, right. Okay, I think I see it. Okay, because I was thinking, I was thinking once we get to um like to the second state, yeah. Then the next thing would be like uh the loop, and then B. But actually, it's either or. Yeah, exactly. It's not uh, it's um, not this then that. It's this or that. Okay, so whenever there's two arrows coming out of a state. It yeah. needs to be an or. It it's not. It cannot be like a. Um, yeah. For for this a, case here. Yeah. Yeah. For this case here, because this is, you can stay in a, right? Because there's two options for, like, if you're in two, right? There's two mm -hmm. options to stay in two. You can uh, read an a, or you can do this thing and go back, right? This thing and go back. And then oh. you can do. You can do either one of those things any number of times interchangeably. Okay, and the first part, it, because again, like in, in the first state, you have, you still have two arrows, one looping, uh, yeah. a looping on A, and then the other one, uh, A plus B, uh, B star. That one is uh, a concatenation because, because they have yeah. different destinations. Y yeah, uh, very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, so you stay in zero. And then you go to two. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Good. Good question. Uh, so let's see. Uh, someone asked me if I could re explain something, I think. Would you mind explaining why those are equivalent? So I don't know if I answered that question. Um, I think that was a question on the uh, S star plus B star in parenthesis. Oh, this? Oh, right. Yes. Um, why are these, uh, the question is, why are they equivalent? Oh, right. Okay. So, um, well, well, simply put, I mean, um, what, it, what does this say? This is saying I can, at any position, I can have an A or a B, right? And then what is this saying? This is saying at any position, I can have any number of A's and then a B. And then I can interchange those. 
But then uh, that's the same as saying I can have any number of those A's in a row, right? Which I can do with uh, A or B star by just saying A, 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 say, okay. So, okay, good. So I think, okay. Um, can you go over how you get the, uh, don't know if I answered that. Okay, I, uh, I probably, okay, let, let me just do it in general. Let's just, let's just not look at, let's say you have Q0 and you have Q final. This is a final state. Let's say this is R1, this is R2, this is R3, this is R4, right? Okay, so how do you go from this to a regular expression? Um, so the first thing you need to do is you're in Q0, right? You need to get your final state, right? So you can go from Q0 to QF by reading R1 any number of times and then reading R2, right? So you read R1 any number of times and then uh, you read R2 to get to QF. So now you're at QF. Right, you're at QF, and now you want to stay at QF, right? So how do you stay at QF? You can uh, either uh, read R3 or, right? So you can either read R3 or read R4, read R4, uh, read R1 any number of times, read R, and then read R2. Right? So that's how you stay in, Q, in QF. And then you can stay in QF any number of times. right? So that's why there's a star here. And that's how you go from uh, this to, to this. OK, so I hope that's clear. Uh, would A star, A or B, B star? Uh, did I answer that? That has to do with, uh, so now you're concatenating inside. So, um, so I, okay, so let me, let me just think about it. So you're saying, uh, I'm saying you have A or R. So R is a regular expression and you have star. And now you're asking, is this equivalent to A star R? And then is there a star? Uh, yes. So um, let me think about it. Uh, does anyone have an answer? Um, so. Uh, I, I don't think so because I don't think so either. Yes. So you removed the star on the right side, right? Like there's outside the parentheses, there's no um, star because yeah. you scribbled over it. And... Oh no, there is a star here. Oh, there, there is. Oh, yeah. okay. I have to think about it then. <laughs> yeah. So the, these are these are equivalent. Um, but if you remove the star, then my instinct is no, but um, let's see why. You would have to have an R. Yeah, no yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 very good. Yeah, yeah, you need, yeah, very good. Yeah, exactly. So this forces you, uh, because there's no star here, that you're always forced to end with an R here. Uh, whereas this, you can, yeah. So, um, uh, so, uh, uh, so this, for instance, this you can't generate uh a a right you can't do it because uh, if you say okay i'm gonna, i'm going to use this this sequence then you can you can write any number of a's but then you have to end with an r right uh, but then you can write a a with this so so no uh, so then um so then someone said so jali uh, justin said uh, would that be equivalent? So then because of this, the answer is no. Uh, or just, yeah, very good. So you can't, so Felix, uh, you can't, you can't even just write A here. Uh, whereas you can do that here. Yeah, good.
Um, okay, good. Good questions. Um, any other questions for this before we go to the next exercise? Can you just clarify question 11? Uh, oh, that's the one in minimal. Um, what is the number of, what is the minimum number of states for a DFA that accepts? Um, so, I mean, one way to do this is, uh, well, I mean, the way to do this is you create a DFA. Um, so in this case, um, I have A, and then if I have a B, I put this in a trap state, and then any number of Bs, and then an A. Uh, and then if I'm here and I have an A, I can stay at the same place. If I have a B, I go back. So why is four the minimum? Uh, because when you do your uh, minimization algorithm, right? So you're gonna start with, um, uh, you're gonna start with uh, your initial and your, your final states are the two partitions. Um, and what you're going to, to realize is that when you go through the, um, the partitions, uh, that uh, you're going to get four distinct uh, partitions, meaning that you can't reduce this uh, DFA further. Um, so, so it is a DFA, right? So it's not, it's not an FA because I can think of an FA in three states, uh, but you probably can't do that in less than three states. Um, yeah, so to answer this question, you just apply the uh, minimization algorithm. Okay, so, um, all right, good. So then uh, let me go to the grammar question. So 20. Okay, so what string is generated by the following grammar? Uh, so again, let me give you, let me give you two minutes and then we'll look at it uh, together. All right, so um, let's look at uh, this question. So what string is generated by following grammar? And so we have, uh, okay, someone did, someone did all of them, um, which is good because that was where I was heading. 
Um, but uh, let's first answer the, the initial question, which is uh, the MCQ. So, well, I don't know if everyone realized, but it was, you had a list of strings. So you had to choose from one of these. Uh, and then, yeah, the, then the next step is to do it in general. So, um, so, let, so let's see. So to, to do this question, you need to go one by one, right? You have no choice. Uh, well, unless you, you, you're, you're super fast and you, you see the pattern uh, very quickly. Um, but if you want to be safe, then um, you, you have to sort of go one by one, right? Um, so uh, so let, let's start with, can, can I do AAA? Um, well, if I just look at the grammar quickly, um, all of these production rules have variables. Uh, the only one that doesn't, uh, right? The only one that's just a terminal. Uh, oh, it's, uh, it's uh, whoops. Uh, okay, well, yeah, that's the answer, but it was BA. Um, but so, so let, let, let me show you the logic. Um, so uh, the only terminal production rule here is with a B, right? Meaning that, um, and since this is a right linear grammar, uh, right? So you're, you're always substituting, you're doing stuff and then you have a variable, you're doing stuff and then you have another variable. So that means that because it's a right linear variable and your only terminal, your only terminal production rule is B, then that means that your string that's generated by the grammar must uh, end in a B, right? So meaning that it can't be this and it can't be this. So then, uh, you only have two options left. So uh, it's either BAB or AAB. So then at that point, uh, uh, you can't, I don't know, I can't really tell that quickly. Uh, I think the. Yeah. Oh, okay, no, uh, I thought that. Never mind. About okay. So. Um, so I would, so to be honest, what I would have done is I would have started with this one. So I would have started with BAB. I would have said S is replaced by um, BA, right? Because I want to generate BAB. Uh, then I replace the A with uh, AAS. And then uh, then already I, I see that I'm, I'm dead, right? I can't, uh, this, this must have been a, this should have been a B. So it can't be this one either. So then it must be this string. And then we can just, um, we can reassure ourselves or, or sort of, uh, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? We can convince ourselves by doing the actual production, the actual derivation. So S is replaced by AB. Uh, then you can replace B by S. So we have AS. Then again, I'm going to replace S by AB. So I have AAB. And then I replace B by the terminal B. And there you go. Okay, so, uh, okay, good. So there's, there's a, uh, uh, a shortest string question, which is nice because that's the question I was gonna ask. Um, so, uh, so now we have this, uh, we, we know that it's AAB, okay, but what about in general? So in general, um, if you don't see it right away, uh, the, the, the easiest way, or the safest way, I would say, to get the um, uh, the language from the grammar is to go through a, an, an FA, right? So uh, there, there is some more like sophisticated way of going directly to a regular expression, but uh, I mean, it's not as uh, reliable, I would say. So, um, in this case, it's nice because it's a right linear grammar, so it's actually quite quite easy to get an FA, right? So uh, every production rule like uh, this one becomes, um, so the variable becomes the state and the terminal is the transition. So uh, S can go to B with A and then S can go to A with B, right? And then uh, A uh, goes back to S uh, with an A and then B, can go back to S uh, with lambda, uh, or you can go directly to your, your final state. Remember in the, the conversion, you always have 
you always want to have a single final state uh, and you can do that with a B, right? So, okay, so I have this, um, uh, I have this FA. So now I can, I can simplify it. Uh, so for instance, I can already tell that this block here uh, is, I start at S and then I read B, A, A to go back to S. And I can do that any number of times, uh, meaning that my S can have the loop uh, B, A, A, um, right? And then, so let me, let me do it step-by-step. Step. So then I can go to B, and I can go back to B with a lambda, and then I can go to B with the F, right? Then um, I need to get rid of this intermediate state. So how do I do that? I just eliminate any transition that goes through it. Um, so that would be, I can go from S to VF via B by reading AB. So I can go directly to VF with AB. Or I can go back to B uh, with an A, right? With A and then lambda. So I can go A or B A, right? And then I can do that any number of times, right? So then the regular expression is A or B A A star and then A B. And so I see someone that has gotten it. So very good. And so yes, the shortest string here generated by the grammar is A B. Okay. Um, so you can already see how uh, useful this, this conversion algorithm can be, uh, especially with the regular uh, grammars, right? So remember this grammar is regular. I would also like to point out because it's a uh, right linear. Um, so sorry, like in, in the exam, well, in the exam, do yes. you think, do you think, um, that this is like a time if like we would have time to go through this process like you, it's okay if we take the time to draw it or is it, it's uh, well, not this too took slow? me this took me what uh five minutes yeah yeah so i i think that's a reasonable amount for a question okay yeah uh, sir yeah um just a quick question if it was yeah. left linear you would yeah. just make yeah. it right linear and then make your FA and then yeah. swap the arrows, that's it? Yeah, exactly, but yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's just in general. Yeah, hopefully you don't get that because left linears are, are a bit of a pain to convert, right? Because yeah. it does take a bit more steps, but yeah, that's that's how you would do it, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so, so I think there was, is that the language or, so this is the regular expression, the regular expression that denotes the language uh, generated by this grammar. So uh, in other words, if this is the grammar G and this is your regular expression R, then L of G is equal to L of R. L of R. Oh God, L of R. Uh, okay, and if this was left linear, right. So so then what, what I just said, uh, if, if you had a left linear grammar, LLG, left linear grammar, then you would need to convert it uh, yeah, you need to convert it to a right linear grammar unless you, unless it's a really easy one. Um, like, I don't know, something like S. Um, what's, what's a really easy left linear grammar? This, yes, this would be nice, right? This would be very nice in a, in a, in a quiz. Um, if it's more complicated, uh, then uh, you need to uh, reverse the left linear grammar to a right linear grammar, uh, then uh, convert that to an FA and then uh, reverse the FA. Uh, so, so, then, so then you'll have the FA that corresponds to the left linear grammar and then you can write the regular expression. Uh, Okay. Sir, just yep. as an example, can you just reverse the FA on top that you made already? Yes, just I can do that. Um, so let's take this FA. Uh, I think this is copy. Yeah, okay, that's copy. So paste, okay. So uh, one thing about uh, reversing, one thing about reversing 
uh, FAs that you, that you need to remember is that you need to have, uh, well, of course you have one initial state, you always have one initial state, but you also need to have one uh, final state. Uh, so um, if you have several final states, if you have several final states, then uh, use lambda transitions to create a single final state. Because otherwise the algorithm doesn't work because it's not designed for that. So, uh, but now, so I was asked to reverse this FA, which is a good question. So suppose I have this FA. So the steps are um, your final state becomes your initial state. Your initial state becomes your final state. Uh, so let's say prime, prime, and then uh, reverse, reverse all transitions. Okay, so uh, so how do I do that? Well, so I see uh, VF becomes my initial state, uh, S becomes my final state, and then I reverse all of the transitions. So instead of going from B to VF with B, I go from VF to B with B, uh, then I go from B to S with A, and then S to B with lambda, and then S to A with B, or no, sorry, A to S with B, uh, then this intermediate state to A with A, and then S to this intermediate state with A. Uh, and then this is the reverse. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Thank you. No problem. All right. Um, so, any other questions about this uh, this question, this uh, exercise, or grammars in general? Uh, like, uh, is there any question that he could ask, like regarding ambiguous grammars, or like, is it just something as simple as is this grammar right linear, uh, left linear, or neither? Like, is that? Um, I mean, that's a possible question. There is, there is definitely a lot of different possible questions you can ask, right? I mean, uh, that's another question you could ask. You could ask, so uh, what's the shortest string? How many strings of length four? How many strings of length less than two? Uh, is this particular string accepted? Um, Would like uh, ambiguous grammars? Uh or, or like, you know, just, just with like ambiguity, like, you just, what do you like? Do you um, think, like, what kind of question, like a grammar that's in, uh, neither left or right linear, like, what will it just be like? Because it's multiple choice, right? So, uh -huh. like, there, like, there's no way that he could ask us to like prove uh, whether grammar is left linear or right linear, or it, it'd just be like a true or false, like, because the examples that we saw in the lecture were very straightforward, you know, like a left. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yes, yeah. a certain way and a right linear is a certain way. But I'm just wondering, is there anything else you could ask regarding those? Uh, well, well, like you said, you can't do any proofs, right? Because it's a right, CPU. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, do you um, know how many questions, by the way? No, I, I don't have. Uh, uh, again, uh, TAs. I, I, I think a lot of students think TAs know uh, more than. Uh, uh, we know uh, exactly the same as, as you. Uh, it's right. the harsh reality. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank okay. you, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right, but uh, but yeah, but good question, right? Fair enough. Uh, it's I mean, uh, and a good exercise just in general when you study is uh, try to ask yourself what possible questions can be asked for that particular topic. That's a really good way of of uh, studying in my opinion. Um, okay, so uh, any other questions about grammars? No, okay. So, so then we're, we're gonna move on to the last exercise, uh, which is about closure property. Right? There's a big X for pumping lemma, right? There's no pumping lemma, uh, but we're gonna do a, a closure property uh, uh, question. So we're gonna do exercise 28, it's a true or false. Um, so I'll give you a minute. Uh, and then we'll we'll do it together.
Okay. So, um, all right. A lot of people saying false. Uh, for someone who's, who said false, uh, uh, you need a counterexample, right? To show that it's false. So what's a possible counterexample for anyone who said that it's false? Uh, I can give an example maybe. Yeah. What if L1 is equal to AA? Uh-huh. And L2 is equal to um, Mm. I thought I had one, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so someone else. L2 can be A and BN. Uh, L1 is AB. Uh, so L1, L1 is AB. L2 is a and B N. Uh, I guess you meant. Okay, so but then, as someone pointed out, then the union uh, is not regular. So then, then you're not. That's not a counterpoint. Hmm. All right. So. So okay. So. We can't find a, a counterexample, so now we think it's true. <laughs> All right, so so let's see. Let's let, let's just uh, let's look at a Venn diagram. Uh, so we have L one, right? Oh, oh no, wait. Someone someone. Uh, L one. Uh, L one is okay, and L two. Oh, well, that's not a. So you so you're saying it's true. Uh, that's also yeah. Because I mean the union is would be regular, and then L two would be also regular. So in, if anything, it looks like you're trying to show that it's true. Which. But you can't you can't do by an example. L one is AB, right? But then the union. Okay, so, so the union is not regular. So right, this is saying if L one union L two is regular. So imagine you have L one, and then you have L two. So then their union. So all of this, all of this is regular. Right, and then L one is finite, so uh, L one is so. So all of this is, all of this is, <laughs> all of this is regular, and then this, this is finite. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. So I think I I think I can prove I can uh, prove that this is true. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so we can just as assume L two is a is not a regular language. Uh huh. So when it, then we if we want uh, L one union L two is regular, then we have we the L one should be uh, L two should be a subset of L one. Until that L L two is a sub. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, to make to to make L L one union L two is regular, then we. Then we, we have to make the L2 is a subset of L1 and the L1 should be regular. But if L2 is a subset of uh, L1, then L1 is of infinite. So we can prove that it's, it's yeah. true. So, so the idea, yeah, so the idea you have is good. It's, so what you're saying, so you're saying, suppose L2 is a regular, what, what, it, what is this? So, so then what would happen is, okay, so, you, so now you're saying that, and you have that L1 is finite, right? So now you're saying that, that, that magically I have L1 union L2. So a finite language has allowed my union to become regular. That, so, so that's fishy, right? That, that doesn't seem right. It's, 
it's hard to believe that you only need a finite number. So what is it saying? You only need a finite number of elements to make any, any language that's irregular, regular. So that, this is what that, that's what, so that would be that statement, right? So that's clearly a contradiction because you, you because that would, that would imply that every language is regular, which is, which is not true. Um, so that would be one way. Uh, although the way, is, so your, your other thought, because that was an exactly your thought process, but um, this would have led to a contradiction, but what you also said also leads to a contradiction. So, um, so, so good. So, okay, so, um, so someone has, has just said that, that they think it's true. And so um, you can prove it by contradiction. I'm gonna give you a, 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 a much more direct way of proving it. Uh, I'm gonna use a direct proof, okay? So how am I going to do that? So uh, what do I have? I have L1 union L2 and I have L1. So I know L1 is finite, right? So now I want L2 and I wanna express L2 uh, in such a way that I'm using this fact and this fact. So how can I do that? Well, if I just, again, look at my Venn diagram, I have L1, L2, all right, this is L2. So what is, what is L2 actually? Uh, L2, you can think of L2 as being the union of L1 with L2, and then removing uh, this part, right? Removing, removing the blue part, right? So what is the blue part? The blue part is L1 minus L2, okay? And so now, now what is this? So um, L1 is finite, right? L1 is finite. So what does that mean? L1 has a finite number of elements, okay? And now what you're doing is you're doing a finite number of elements minus uh, something. So your result is of course going to be finite, right? Because um, what, what's the best case is that you don't remove anything from L1, so you still have a finite number of elements. The worst case is you move everything, so you have the empty set and you have a finite number of elements. So meaning that all of this is finite, all of this is finite. Okay, so then what do you have? You have the L1 union L2, this is regular, minus L1 minus L2, uh, this is finite, but a finite language is regular. But now you have a regular language minus another regular language. And so uh, we have a property that says that if A is regular, and B is regular, A minus B will also be regular. So that means that all of this is regular. So that means that uh, L2 is indeed regular. And so the answer is true. Okay, so, so now, um, now I feel like people have questions. So any questions about this? Uh, no, that, that's not the lesson to take away from this example. Uh, the lesson to take away from this example is uh, if you want to show that something is regular, um, no, 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 no rolling dice. Uh, the, okay, so the, well, high level, what's the takeaway? The takeaway high level is that if you want to show that something is regular, uh, you need to do something like this. You need a, uh, uh, this is a non-constructive proof where you're using closure properties directly. Uh, you can also use a constructive proof where you create an FA. Um, and then if you want, uh, if you want what? If you want to show that it's not regular, you need a counter term, right? And like I said before, uh, the best counter examples always start with uh, these guys and then plus, let's say, A and B and right? Um, 
okay but uh to show we know so okay so here here i'm showing it's regular with closure properties um remember there are several ways to show that a language is regular uh so the to show that l is regular there may there are three main ways fa's you create a regular grammar right so uh, a dfa or nfa uh, regular grammar or regular expression or for you use closure properties right so to prove that something is regular use that and then to disprove of course you use the pumping lemma but for questions like this for questions like this where you don't have any information about the structure of the language uh, you have no choice but to do something like a direct proof here okay so the direct proof here is i'm I'm using right what's a direct proof it's it's you use your 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 condition in if uh, to derive your conclusion in your then so here I know that l1 union l2 is regular and I know that l1 minus l2 is finite because l1 is finite and so um, and then I know that l2 is uh, this uh, language minus this language, both are regular, which implies that L2 is regular. Um, Excuse me, um, I'm yes. looking at our slides and uh, I'm looking at closure properties of regular languages. Uh -huh. and, I, and I thought that the difference between regular language was the only one that wasn't closed under. Uh, yeah. Because you said earlier that okay. you said that the difference between two regular languages must be regular, which I didn't, I didn't yes. think was true. Oh, no, because, yeah, it is true because uh, uh, L1 minus L2 is equal to L1 intersect L2 complement. So uh, this is regular, right? Uh, if L2 is regular, then the complement is regular. And then regular languages are closed under the intersection. So this is also regular. Uh, that makes more sense. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Okay, good, 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 good. Are these exercises going to be posted? They are posted. Oh, they are posted. Perfect. All right, so uh, so that does it for uh, exercises. Uh, now, if you have uh, any questions about anything, uh, I can uh, try to answer it. Oh, yes, fine. Yeah. Do you have a question? So could, it be, could a language be just contain the empty string? Could a language, uh, yes. Okay, so in the in the assignment assignment two, assignment two, assignment two question two. So this should be there Whoa. is there is a there is an example which is L. The language only contains the uh, empty string. Uh, to be honest, I haven't started marking assignment two. Give me two seconds. Uh, yeah, but I just say like in, in the assignment two, question two, the solution oh, say yeah, that, that question. Right, right, right. The the L complement star is equal to that one or yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the in the in the solution it says there's no such uh, language. But if L what? if the language equal to the empty string, the set of the empty string, then it could be correct. Yeah, that doesn't sound right there. I mean, definitely the language containing just Lambda is a language, 100%. So I don't know. Uh, solution. So uh, to show this, assume that L is such a language. Hence the complement. Okay, but that's not saying that, is it? What? Sorry. It's saying it's saying it's just saying that uh, it's a proof by by contradiction, no? Yeah, but in the final, it say L doesn't doesn't exist, right? But actually, the language it exists. Uh, so you're disagreeing with the solution? Yeah, so as I, as I say, so 
So when the language is equal to the set of the empty string, you could this is correct. Uh, if L is equal to the language that just contains the empty string, yes. Well then, then uh, so L star is equal to this, and then uh, L star and then L star uh, uh, complement is yeah. yeah. And now you're claiming that this is the same as. Um, but, but, sir, but yeah, because so, the, the L is equal to the empty string, so the com complement should not contain the empty string, right? Uh, yeah. So you, so yeah, that's the, that's what I the, did. Oh, oh right. yeah, sorry, sorry, That's sorry. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry about this. Okay, so then L complement star is, you have sigma star. Well, it, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter where you remove, you still have, right, it, it doesn't matter. You have uh, A comma B something star, so then you still have sigma star. So the, these all look different. The others all look the same. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. I mean, you, you saw what I did, right? So. Yeah, I see. Okay. So, so yeah, that, I, I mean, that doesn't seem like an example. Um, but so if you disagree with the solution. Um, well, I, I see, I see that you're, you're correct. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? So all finite languages are regular, yes. Can we go over left linear grammar to right linear grammar? Yes, I can do that. Uh, let me come up with an example. So S, let's say A, A, B, A. A gives you, let's say, um uh, D or S or A. Okay, so let's say you okay. So let's say you have this, you have this left linear grammar. Um, and you want to convert it to a right linear grammar. Um, so so what are the steps? Um the, the first step is to reverse this, this grammar. So um, the reverse, reverse the grammar. So you have S gives you A, S or A, B, A, and then A gives you B, A, S, A, right? So I reverse the grammar, then I create an F, A. So uh, S, uh, I can go to S with A, I can go to A with A, B. Then I can stay in A with B. I can go back to S with lambda. Then I can go to A. I can go to the final state with, um, with A. Right, whoops. Uh, then I reverse the FA. So I reverse the FA. So then uh, this becomes my start or my... Uh, Initial state, right? And then this becomes my final state. And then I have this intermediate state. I have A, and then I reverse all the all the uh, transitions. So from VF, I go to A with A. I can stay in A with B. I can go from A to S with B, and then A. And then I can stay in S with A. And I can go from S back to A with lambda. Um, yes. To go, uh, if you have a left linear grammar, you always have to make it, yes. You have to reverse it. You have to reverse it to get an F. Yes. Unless you can do it in your head mentally, which I cannot do. Um, so then, and then the last thing is uh, read as a right linear grammar. 
So then your, in this case, your initial uh, variable is VF. So uh, you have VF and you go um, with A, with terminal A to the variable A. Then at the variable A, you can stay at the variable A with B, uh, or you can go to S with VA. And then once you're at S, uh, you can stay at S with A, or you can go back to A, or you can end your string. So that's the conversion. Oops. Uh, here. Okay, good. Many uh, other questions? Give a regular exp <laughs> a regular expression for the language a n b n n less than equal to three thirty five. So, so to be honest, I think that that, was, that question was very troll. Um, <laughs> so, what's the regular expression? So it's uh, it's lambda or a b or a a b b or and so on until you um, exhaust your hand muscles. And you write A 335 times and then B 335 times. That would be the regular expression. Because, because you can't, right? This is not a regular expression, right? Don't do this. This is not valid. Right? You actually need to write out the, the string. Uh, no problem. All right. Any other questions? For your questions, number one. Number one. True or false? Uh, yes. Yes. So, yeah, very good. So, because this is right, this is L A star and this is L B star. So then uh, it's any number of consecutive A's, so let's say N A's, with any number of consecutive B's, so let's say M B's. So yes, in general, it's A and B M. Very good. Any other questions? Yes, yeah, so uh, general transition graphs, I think that's what it stands for, is how you get, uh, is how you do this, right? So like this is a GTG, so, so I mean, yes. Uh, but you need to know how to use it, right? Could you show that LLG steps again? Yes. Um, so you have, I don't know if this is too zoomed out. Okay. So you have this, uh, left linear grammar. Um, so then there's, there's four steps, right? Reverse the grammar in the sense that, so when I say I reverse the grammar, it means that let's say I have X gives me Y1, Y2, Yn. Then reversing the grammar means X gives me YN, YN minus one, Y one. Yeah, that's what it means. So I reverse the grammar. So now it's become a right linear grammar. Then I uh, create the FA, uh, which is easy to do because um, there's, there's rules for let's say AS, that's just use the transition A, um, use the transition A and you go back to the variable S where each variable becomes a state. So you have this FA, uh, then you reverse the FA. So remember I showed how to reverse an FA a couple of, several minutes ago, I would say. Uh, so you reverse that FA. So basically it's like you, um, so this is one reverse, right? This is one reverse. Then this is a, a second reverse, right? So if you reverse a reverse, so, 
L reverse, reverse is equal to L, right? So that's what you're doing. So you reverse the F FA, and then you just need to read the FA uh, as a uh, right linear graph, right? Yeah, no problem. Okay, any other questions? Uh, do you know like uh, the average in this class normally? Is it like high, low? Because uh, I've heard I've heard some scary things. Well, whatever you've heard, the most important thing that you need to know is that the class is curved. So, okay. uh, so there you go. That's good to hear. Oh, and uh, yeah, quiz three, so that we can look at this. Quiz three, that's a good question, um, which I don't. So the quiz closes, it's, it's closed. So there's no reason why, because I mean, it's already graded, right? Because Moodle just grades automatically. So I can email him to ask, so you can't see, if you look at the quiz, you can't see like your attempt. Uh, uh, no. No, okay. So there's a, yeah. there's a comment. Uh, could we go oh, over sorry. it? Yeah, yeah. If you uh, like this, uh, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. Uh, is there a specific question in the quiz? Uh, the thing too is that we can't access it. So is it possible that you just ask them? Yeah, I can do that. It. Okay. Uh, I can ask him to release it, but why? Because uh, it's, I mean, it's right. It was, it was due Thursday, right? So, uh, yeah, I can send them an email. But it looks like the average was not too bad. Uh, but I don't know if there are specific questions, like if there's a specific question for the quiz, if you maybe remember, then I could maybe answer it. But uh, but I guess it's hard to remember from memory. Uh, so I'll try to ask him to post it. All right. Um, so anything else? So I think I can probably stay a few more minutes. Okay, my pleasure. So, um, all right, well, so, so in that case, uh, uh, good luck everyone. Um, study, study well. Uh, don't don't be too scared or discouraged. Um, and um, I will see you Monday. All right. So uh, take care, everyone. Bye bye.